All right, so today I want to talk about um, two features that Bitcoin has, which allows you to bump up the fee and to get a transaction confirmed faster, okay? Um, these two features are replaced by fee and child pays for parent. Um, replaced by fee, also known as RBF, is a feature which allows the sender to broadcast a new transaction with a higher fee and to replace the old transaction. So the idea here is if you send someone some Bitcoin um, and, you know, or even if you sent it to yourself, right? Like let's say you consolidated some UTXOs and the fee that you set was too low and you wanted to bump up the fee so that it gets confirmed faster, you can do that with RBF, okay? So I wanna show you how to do that. Um, but then also uh, child pays for parent is a way for the receiver to bump up the fee. So in this case, what would happen is someone pays you some Bitcoin, so you receive it, and they set the fee rate too low, and so you want it to be confirmed faster. So you do a CPFP by broadcasting a new transaction, which includes that unconfirmed UTXO that was just sent to you. And then both of those transactions together um, basically get, get considered together. And so there's like kind of a, an effective fee bump for both transactions together. And then the idea is, you know, the miner is incentivized to mine both of them. Okay. So that's, um, that's kind of, you know, that's the way, that's the way you do it from a receiver side, uh, point of view as well. One thing to note with RBF, you know, which is kind of an interesting thing to think about is when you do an RBF, you can also change the pay to address. So one of the things that's kind of controversial about replace by fee is that you can send somebody Bitcoin and, you know, it, as long as it doesn't get confir confirmed, if it's just sitting in the mempool, you can then RBF it back to yourself, right? Or to someone else. <laughs> and so, you know, without any confirmations, um, Bitcoin in the mempool, it, it's not, it's not confirmed, right? It's, 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 you have to wait for the confirmations for you to be sure that you actually got paid if you're just basing it off of payments that are sitting in the mempool, um, you know, there are ways that people can RBF it and send it back to themselves or to someone else. Um, so in my examples that I'm going to walk through, I guess I'm going to do it from the point of view of, you know, like an evil RBFer who is uh, basically rugging the funds that they paid somebody that haven't been confirmed yet. Okay, so I want to do it from that point of view just to kind of get your wheels turning and to uh, show you what's possible. Okay, um, but you know, just keep that in mind. So uh, let's hop on the computer now. So one of the reasons why I'm doing this today is because Testnet actually has a backlog of transactions. Okay, um, this doesn't happen very often. Uh, but we're in this weird, you know, period of time right now where uh, people are using testnet, right? It's it's um, a week until the halving, and there's a lot of people excited about doing stuff on that day um, on mainnet, and so they're getting ready to do it by practicing on testnet right now. And so we have a backlog, right? And because we have a backlog in testnet, um, I can actually make a tutorial of how to do RBF and CPFP without those transactions getting confirmed, you know, quickly and then ruining my tutorial. So anyways, that's kind of the reason why I'm doing this now um, is because it's actually possible to do on testnet now. So that's kind of fun. Um, but anyways, so right now, you know, uh, I'm looking at, you know, this is mempool.space, but it is looking at the testnet. So you can look at testnet if you want, right? You can look at kind of like the the testnet blockchain and any um, transactions sitting in the mempool and testnet, if you go here, okay? And right now the, uh, you know, the, the priority fee rate is, says it's about 14 sats per V-byte, but 
you know, if, if, we, if we were to probably submit one around 13 or, or so, it, it would probably get in, right? Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Sparrow open, okay? And in Sparrow right now, I have three hot wallets, which I've already set up on Sparrow. I have the evil RBFers wallet. I have Alice's wallet and, and she has no, no sats yet. And then I have Bob's wallet and he has no sats yet, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to pay from the evil RBFers account, I'm gonna pay Alice some sats, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna click send. I'm gonna pay to Alice. Okay. Give this a label, RBF example. Let's pay Alice hundred. Uh, let's pay Alice two hundred thousand sats. Okay. And I'm gonna really lowball this fee. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna send it in. You know, at um, let's just say maybe two sat per V byte. Okay. And let's go ahead and create that transaction. Finalize for signing, sign it, and broadcast. Okay, so that's now broadcasted. If I click on this link right here, I can see it in mempool.space. And in mempool.space, you can see it's waiting, you know, way, way in the back of the line. Okay, it's all the way in the back of the line. Um, and there's a bunch of blocks in front of it filled with transactions willing to pay higher fees, okay? So now let's go back to Sparrow and let's go to Alice's tab. Um, I'm gonna close this transaction, but let's go to Alice's. So now we can see Alice has 200,000 sats, um, which are sitting in the mempool, so they're not confirmed yet. But let's say Alice wants to pay Bob now, all right? So what Alice can do is Alice can hover over this and there's a button right here which has this kind of door with an arrow, okay? That's the icon. So if you click on that icon, this is how you do a child pays for parent. What you're doing is you're effectively um, submitting another transaction uh, to, you know, to, to pay someone else, right? Or even to pay yourself and bump up the fee to get it to confirm faster. Um, but you're creating a, a brand new transaction with a higher fee rate so that, um, you know, both the parent and the child transaction will get confirmed faster. That's the idea. Okay. So I'm going to change the address here to Bob because I want, you know, I, now I'm Alice and I want to pay Bob for, for some of the work that he's done for me. Okay. So I'm going to pay Bob 100,000 Satoshis. All right. And I'm going to bump up the fee. Um, let's say I'll, I'll make the fee of this transaction around 10 sat per V-byte. And then what that does is it makes the effective fee rate of both the parent and the child transaction combined a little bit over five sat per V-byte. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, a, a weighted average of the two, all right? Um, and in that way, it kind of bumps it up a bit higher in line, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and create that transaction. Finalize for signing, sign, and broadcast. Okay. So now, and I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll open this one as well. Okay. So you can see it's still, you know, pretty far back in line, um, but it is, in you know, it, it's further along in line than the first one. Okay. The first one was like all the way at the very, very back. Um, but if we go back to Sparrow, and I'll close that and we look at Bob. So now Bob has 100,000 sets sitting in the mempool, okay? Alice has a little bit less than 100,000 because you know she had been paid 200, but then just paid 100,000, okay? And the evil RBFer you know, still has this unconfirmed transaction. So now let's pretend that we're the RBFer Right, and, and we want to rub these funds from Alice, okay? Because they haven't confirmed yet. And so, what we can do is this button here is the RBF button. So if we click on that, and here we can 
RBF this back to ourselves, okay, which is this address, um, just to make sure I'm going to click on this receive and just to make sure it matches, which it does, okay. And now um, let's give this a fee rate that will get this, you know, definitely confirmed in the next block, okay. So I'll bump it all the way up to like 15, how about, or maybe even 16, just to be sure, okay. So create the transaction, finalize for signing, sign, broadcast. Now let's take a look at what happens here. Boom. So you see the evil RBF balance just went back to normal. <laughs> okay. If we go to if we go to Bob's, Bob's went to zero because now that transaction that Alice sent him uh, got invalidated. Um, so there's no longer a transaction for Bob. And then Alice's also goes to zero, okay? Because th there's no transactions for Alice either because the evil RBF are just RBF to back to back to themselves. So you see how like, yeah, basically RBF um, not only allows you to bump up the fee to, you know, push a transaction through faster, it also allows you to kind of, you know, either rug a transaction that has zero comps from someone you sent it to, or, I mean, maybe it, it, in a way that's not so evil, you know, let's say someone tries to force you to pay them and you pay them and you pay a very low fee, okay? Like they're, they kidnap you and they, and they say, you know, pay me this much Bitcoin or else whatever, and you pay them the Bitcoin, but with a very low fee, once they release you, as long as, they're, as long as that transaction hasn't been confirmed, you could then RBF it back to yourself, right? And basically kind of save your funds in that way. So, I mean, maybe this isn't always going to be used in evil ways, right? And, and, and for the most part, it's not. Um, I think most people don't accept transactions unless they have confirmations. And this is exactly why, right? You can't be sure of a payment until it's actually in the blockchain, right? Um, but anyways, yeah, I mean, that, you know, so that's kind of just an example of, of both how to do a child pays for parent as well as an RBF. And just to kind of wrap this up, if we were to look um, at this transaction again, let's, this is the one that Alice sent to Bob. If I refresh this, the transaction won't be found anymore. Okay, so this has been dropped from the mempool now, so it's no longer, no longer there. If I refresh this one, so this one is still here, but it's been replaced. So we could go to this, go to this uh, tab here, and it, it, or this option here, and it shows us the transaction that replaced it, and um, the new fee rate, as well as you know the addresses that it got replaced to. So if I was Alice, and you know I saw that my transaction got replaced, I could see where that payment was sent to um, as a replacement. You know, and I can go and complain with whoever was supposed to pay me, right? Hopefully it wasn't some random person that ran away with, you know, something you gave them or whatever. Hopefully you're still with them or, or whatever, if, if it's that kind of situation. Um, but yeah, there, there will be an RBF record for you to kind of follow as a paper trail. Uh, unfortunately, Bob shit out of luck and, and they're just going to have to go talk to Alice about what happened. <laughs> but that's kind of, you know, that's the way it goes, right? Um, yeah, and then as you can see, this one's now, you know, at the front of the line, probably going to get confirmed next. Um, and then once it's confirmed, you know, everything is, is pretty much all set in stone and Alice and Bob are, you know, shit out of luck. So anyways, that's how you do a uh, replace by fee and a child pays for parent in Sparrow Wallet. Um, in this example, I used, uh, you know, hot wallets that were just natively on Sparrow. Um, but, you know, this works also for any sort of um, cold wallet that you have on Sparrow where you're using a signing device like a cold card um, or any of the other ones, right? Um, when in, in, during that step where I did the sign, you know, when I signed the transactions, that would be where you have to sign using your signing device as opposed to just clicking the sign button on Sparrow wallet. So that's it. If you have any questions uh, about RBF or about uh, child pays for parent, or you want any clarity, um, if there's anything I didn't cover, feel free to reach out. Um, if uh, 
you know, if I got anything incorrect, uh, feel free to, you know, <laughs> correct me in the comments. I'm always uh, happy to learn more if, if there's things that I missed. Um, and thanks for watching.